This video reviews the installation of the G5 stainless steel disc brakes for trailers from Tie Down Engineering. The G5 stainless steel disc brake kit includes an aluminum caliper for lightweight and faster heat dissipation, ceramic brake pads, stainless steel drilled rotor with a Galvex coated hub that is pre-assembled with bearings, seal, and grease, stainless steel slider pins, Galvex coated bracket, dust cap, lug nuts, and a cotter pin. Warning, disc brakes require a disc brake actuator. If you are replacing drum brakes or adding brakes to a trailer without brakes, you must purchase and use a disc brake actuator. Using a drum brake actuator with disc brakes will cause brakes to overheat and possibly fail. The hand tools you will need for this installation include a 5 8 inch socket wrench, 5 8 inch wrench, 7 16 inch wrench, 3 8 inch wrench, adjustable pliers, and a hammer. Additional supplies include old rags that can be thrown away that will be helpful in removing old grease and dirt from the spindle area, DOT3 brake fluid, a funnel, and a small wood block for attaching the grease cap on the rotor will also be helpful in this, in this installation. You will also need a floor jack or suitable jack to raise the trailer and two jack stands. Do not attempt to install the brakes without proper support from jack stands under the trailer frame. Do not rely just on the tow vehicle to hold the trailer in place. Remove the cotter pin or tab washer to remove the castle nut and washer from your idler hub or drum brake hub. Our video demonstrates the removal of a drum brake. Idler hubs or older disc brakes will follow the same procedures. Remove the four bolts that hold the brake backing plate to the axle brake flange. Using a clean rag, remove all of the old grease and dirt from the spindle. Inspect the spindle for an excessive wear or rust on the spindle surface. If the seal surface has rust present, you can remove the rust with emery cloth or fine grit sandpaper. Be careful not to create flat spots on the spindle surface. The goal is to have a clean spindle to work with. Before installing the G5 stainless steel rotor, inspect the brake flange and clean if necessary. Apply a thin coat of grease on the spindle to allow the new G5 rotor to go on easier. Install the new G5 rotor following the instructions provided with your G5 brakes. Tighten the castle nut while rotating the G5 rotor to ensure proper seating of the bearings. Back off the castle nut and retighten using the sequence in your written instructions. Your G5 brakes come with pre-assembled mounting brackets and stainless steel slider pins. Do not remove the slider pins. If slider pins are removed for any reason, the threads must be cleaned and a new coat of permanent Loctite must be reapplied. The preferred positions are 12 o'clock or at the top, 9 o'clock to the front, and 3 o'clock to the rear. The brake flange will determine your exact positioning. Consider where the brake hose will attach to the caliper so that the hose will not rub on the trailer frame or be in a position where it can be damaged. Use 7 16 inch by 1 and 1 quarter inch zinc coated hex bolts, lock nuts and washers and torque to 40 foot pounds. The G5 caliper has a swivel inlet connector for the brake hose and a stainless steel bleeder valve. The bleeder valve must have the top or highest position on the caliper after the caliper is in, in its mounted position. Reverse the positions of the bleeder valve and inlet port if necessary. Position the swivel brake connector so that the brake line easily connects to the caliper. Tighten the bolt on the swivel connector to 20 foot-pounds.
Disc brakes require the use of flexible brake hose connected to the caliper. If your trailer came with steel brake lines, install flex hose extensions between the metal brake line and the caliper. Install your grease cap at this time. The wood block is very helpful to press the cap into place. A helpful hint to bleed brakes is the use of an empty clear plastic water bottle and a clear plastic hose that will fit tightly over the bleeder valve. The bottle will catch the excess brake fluid and keep the air from going back into the lines. Pour a small amount of brake fluid into the plastic bottle. Take the plastic hose and attach to the bleeder valve and place the other end in the plastic bottle so that the end of the hose is below the level of the brake fluid. This will allow you to see air bubbles coming out and keep air from re-entering the caliper. To bleed your brakes, follow your actuator instructions to pump the master cylinder. Our video shows a tie-down engineering model 66 actuator. Yours may be the same or similar. The object is to create pressure in the system and pump brake fluid through the system and force any air out of the lines. Always use new, clean DOT3 brake fluid only. Check the reservoir of the actuator often to keep the fluid level high as you are pumping fluid out of the system. Usually it takes three or four pumps and a hold on the last pump to create the needed pressure. Loosen the bleeder valve one quarter to one half a turn to allow the brake fluid to escape. Repeat the pumping until no air bubbles come out of the hose. Bleed the opposite wheel to complete the installation. Reinstall your wheel and tire. Torque the wheel to the wheel manufacturer's specifications. This could be printed on the wheel itself or checked with the trailer manufacturer. Recheck the torque on the wheels after the first 10 miles of use. After you have completed the G5 disc brake installation, check the fluid level in the actuator. Fill, if required, to the specifications of the actuator manufacturer. Road test the trailer in an area with little or no traffic. Recheck fluid levels and all brake hose connection points for leaks. Check all nuts and bolts for tightness. Recheck, recheck, recheck lug nuts on the wheels for proper torque. Always rinse off your trailer and brakes after submerging in brackish or salt water. Should you need additional information, please contact Tie Down Engineering, Atlanta, Georgia.